Hi and welcome to Asian Photography's YouTube channel. My name is Bhavya Desai and today is all about electronic viewfinders. Since the invention of the mirrorless cameras, the electronic viewfinder has played a very important role when it comes to shooting and photography. But have these electronic viewfinders really changed or become better over time? Or there's still something always missing in them? So today, let's find out whether EVFs really need to improve drastically or not. So I have primarily always used DSLRs as the body and the camera to do all the shooting that I do. But in one of my recent trips, I carried the A7R3 as the primary body and it was the only mirrorless camera that I carried. Now while using this extensively, which by the way is a great camera, some things started coming into my mind while shooting these and instantly I started comparing the experience of using a DSLR as compared to a mirrorless body. And the key and one of the most important thing here was the difference between the electronic viewfinder and the optical viewfinder which the DSLR offers. So before we dive into finding out why the electronic viewfinders need to improve drastically, first we need to understand what is the difference between the optical viewfinder and the electronic viewfinder. Now simply put, the optical viewfinder which is traditionally found on the DSLRs is nothing but a representation of what the mirror mechanism is seeing in the camera. Because there's a mirror and what the lens is capturing and projecting onto the sensor, that precise image and a picture is showed onto the viewfinder so that you know this is what you're shooting. Now as compared to this, when it comes to a mirrorless camera, the whole point why it is called a mirrorless camera is because the mirror mechanism is missing. And since this mirror mechanism is missing, the lens basically projects the image directly onto the sensor and a digital rendering of that image from the sensor is projected on your viewfinder. And that's why it's called the electronic viewfinder. So on an average, an electronic viewfinder offers a lot more benefits as compared to the traditional optical viewfinder. For instance, you actually have the capacity to overlay a lot of information which an optical viewfinder might not allow and in general as industry standard these days most of the manufacturers use a resolution of anywhere ranging between 2.1 million dots which of either will be somewhere in the entry level mirrorless category to all the way up to 3.69 million dots or even 4 million dots when it comes to the resolution then there are manufacturers like Fuji which also offer a hybrid viewfinder in their X series cameras. This basically is a combination of optical as well as electronic viewfinder which offers best of both worlds in specific or certain modes. So this pretty much is what most of the manufacturers in the industry do. This includes Panasonic, Canon, Nikon and of course the traditionally much stronger ones like Sony and Fuji as well. But while all of these manufacturers have continuously tried to better the solution that they provide by challenging the boundaries of innovation and improving them further, there is still some things which are missing and that for a person who shoots or uses the camera regularly might pose a small challenge. So why is it that these EVFs need to drastically change. The first reason is for better resolution. Now, as mentioned earlier, the electronic viewfinder basically is nothing but a small tiny LCD screen which gives you what the sensor is capturing. But in order to actually refresh that rate really fast, for example, when I take this camera and I start shooting with it while looking into it, and when I'm continuously moving and changing the focus what happens is that refresh rate is something which is being communicated between the sensor and the viewfinder. So a lot of times most of the viewfinders don't essentially give you the 100% of the resolution which the sensor is seeing. This is ideally so that the processing is done a lot faster and real time. 
But what this does is that this does not really give you the truest representation in terms of the 100% resolution that you see when it comes to the scene. Now, apart from Nikon Z6 and Z7, which are the new entrants into these categories, there is no other camera, which at least I know of, that gives you the 100% resolution inside your viewfinder. Most of the other cameras usually range anywhere between 95 to 97% of the resolution, which is not still 100%. So that is one of the things that really needs to improve when it comes to the electronic viewfinders. So the trade-off between the resolution is directly connected to the battery of the mirrorless camera. And that brings me to my second point, which is the battery drainage. Now, as I mentioned, there is always a chicken and an egg story when it comes to the resolution of the electronic viewfinder and the battery percentage. Because the, uh, because the electronic viewfinder draws in a lot of battery, it always tends to reduce or power down the camera really fast. The manufacturers, if they provide a higher resolution inside the EVF, then obviously it's going to drain the battery out really fast. And on the other hand, if they try to optimize the battery performance, then somewhere they have to trade off the resolution inside the electronic viewfinder as well. I just wish that there was a way where the manufacturers could merge the two and bring the best of the worlds to the photographer so that they would have a good number of resolution as well and an optimized battery life. Because if you're used to shooting with a lot of mirrorless cameras, then you would know that they tend to draw out and drain out the battery really fast. Now this brings me to my final point, which basically is the actual representation of what you're shooting. And honestly, this is the primary reason why the whole idea and thought process behind this video was. When you're using a DSLR and an optical viewfinder, then what you see is exactly what you get. But when it comes to the electronic viewfinders, it is not always that. For example, a lot of the times when you're looking at an image or a subject or a scene through an electronic viewfinder, what you end up capturing might be slightly different than what you see. And this basically is because an electronic viewfinder always tries to increase a lot of its brightness, increase a lot of its resolution in order to give you the best impression of what it sees. But that is not exactly what the sensor might capture. Now for a seasoned professional who uses DSLRs and mirrorlesses a lot, they might be able to compensate by using and tweaking the settings. But for someone who relies a lot on the camera's mechanism and equipments to then basically tweak the exposures up or down, this might pose a slight problem. And if a lot of you have actually used mirrorless cameras, you might have seen or noticed that after using them maybe for a day or two, when you see the pictures on the big screen or on your laptop or computer, then you would probably find that either colors are saturated, the brightness or the exposure is not exactly the same of what you were seeing through your viewfinder. And in order to demonstrate this, we actually used two mirrorless cameras, which is the Canon EOS R as well as the Sony A7 R3 to give you an idea about what you see is not what you get. As you can see, what you're viewing inside the viewfinder in terms of the scene and the subject that we are shooting is a lot different. It's a lot brighter, a lot more saturated. The colors are really popping out. And now if we turn to the actual image, which is being shot, under the same settings, then you'll find that the images are a lot more flatter and a lot more neutral. Of course, by no means these images are bad. They are absolutely fine and everybody who uses mirrorless cameras, especially in the more expensive or at least in the mid-end uh, category, would always post-process your pictures. That's pretty much become a standard now in the industry. But apart from that, it is not always, it does not always deliver what you're seeing. The second example is of the Canon EOS R. Now in this case as well, the story is a lot similar. Although you might find that it is a little bit closer to what the scene is, but in this as well, the exposure as well as the brightness is a lot more poppy. The images inside the electronic viewfinder seems 
quite bright as compared to the actual shot which is being shot later. In comparison, we've used the entry-level DSLR which is the Canon 1500D in order to demonstrate the difference from the optical viewfinder. As you can see, the image through the optical viewfinder which you can see here is quite similar to the actual image and the output which is being shot. So these are the top three things which we thought are the reasons why the electronic viewfinders need to drastically improve. If you know of any more points which you feel are the reasons why this needs to improve further, then do let us know about those in the comments. And if you're a new user of the mirrorless cameras, then do make sure that you keep, you keep these things in mind. And if you're a manufacturer and if you're watching this, then we know that you must be making a lot of efforts to bridging a lot of these gaps. But if there was a way where the improvement in terms of the actual representation of what we see into the viewfinder and the output can be brought a lot more closer, then that will be great for a photographer. So if you've liked this video, then as usual, do like, share and subscribe to our channel. Also, do ensure that you go to our website asianphotographyindia.com to stay in tune with all the latest news. And if you're into hard copy books and versions as well, then you can read the Asian Photography magazine as well. And until next time, happy viewing.